The match day vlog starts here, people. Let's go. It's Watford versus Arsenal in the Premier League. How much longer can we say we're a Premier League club? That is the question. But team news has been announced. So off the back of that 0-0 draw with Manchester United, uh, we have changed quite a fair bit. Uh, Foster and goal, as you'd expect. The back four, the same, as you'd expect. We've got Cathcart partnered with Samir, who was immense at Old Trafford. That last-ditch challenge on Fernandez, Oh, it was a thing of beauty. Uh, we've got left-back Hassan Kamara. Happy birthday, by the way, for that recent uh, celebration. And Kiko Feminia is back. So that's really good, because obviously Ngaki was at Old Trafford um, and Feminia missed out with a minor knock. So to see him back is nice, but also to see him not be able to link up with his partner in crime, Ismail Assar, is a bit of a blow, I'm not going to lie. So I don't know how Manchester United have managed this, but in both games against us this season, they've managed to injure Ismail Assar. So really, that's not ideal. Um, hamstring, we don't know how long he'll be out for, but we need him back desperately, that's for sure. Another man in our front three who we're used to seeing uh, play for the Hornets is Joshua King. And he is not in the squad today uh, off the back of a back issue that he's had. So um, interesting. He's been facing a lot of criticism for his games uh, for Watford recently. And ultimately, he's not been scoring enough goals. He was brought in to do that. He did do that at Bournemouth, but he's really not done it here, unfortunately. Um, other than that, game against Everton. Um, so that's an interesting one. So we have a front three that is youthful, um, but ultimately exciting. I don't know. It's just it's not that experienced and they're not used to playing together at, at this point. But it's Cucho Hernandez, Emmanuel Dennis, and also Joao Pedro. So Pedro... We talked about him time and time again this season. He's been our one player that's given us a bit of hope in this murky, murky season. So that's interesting. Um, the midfield, the same midfield three, which, to be honest, I think Cleverly or Kayambi is a difficult decision, but you've got to love Cleverly's passion and his commitment. He plays for the shirt, but whether he's got the same ability as Kayambi is debatable, but we don't really mind about that. Keep it the same um, you know, midfield that wasn't brilliant against Manchester United I've got to say because a lot of the time where United would win the ball back that midfield wasn't protecting the back four enough but at the end of the day we did enough to get a point at Old Trafford and we were solid in that centre-back pairing so you know he, he really came into his own in the in the first half was it Imran Lusa he, he's so good at you know spraying the passes and dictating it so hopefully Suzoko who I thought played well against Manchester United can show a bit more of that today um, and Cleverly as well gets stuck in. Obviously, he does score against Arsenal in the past, Tom Cleverly, and I'm hoping he, he gets another today. Um, but that front three is really interesting. Now, Arsenal team news, pretty much as you'd expect, with Tommy Esu still out, uh, Cedric at right back. Um, they've got T Tierney at left back, Ramsdale in goal, Ben White and Gabriel. And then the midfield, they've gone with Partey, and they've gone with... Martin Odegaard and Granit Xhaka so hopefully Xhaka can uh, get himself sent off again <laughs> help us out because we need the help uh, that we can get um, but then the slight one that's a well I shouldn't say slight it's quite a drastic surprise but no Emil Smith-Rowe in the squad for Arsenal a man who uh, admittedly has been unbelievable this season scored in the reverse game under controversial circumstances um, but this season he's been for some reason, not used enough. Um, but there is a clear reason as to why, and that's been the form of Gabriel Martinelli. But it's meant that Smith Rowe has always had to start on the bench. So Martinelli's come on uh, and, and started games, and, and Smith Rowe's come on and, and then scored. But he's not even in the squad today. So that's a, a bit of a little mini boost for, uh, for us Watford fans. Um, but yeah, Martinelli, Saka, Lacazette is is the front the front line um so it'd be interesting to see how they how they use that attack today but ultimately we're going into this as Watford fans feeling very neutral I think neutral is the word because we were absolutely uh, just appalled by that Palace game and that is still at the front of our minds but at the same time 
what we saw against Manchester United was encouraging, but we now have to build on it. We have to build on it because we've said this all season. We've had little shoots of promise, little shoots of optimism, uh, and hope is is pushing it possibly. Um, the position we're in, we're really up against it, and we've put ourselves in such a mess that unless you know something drastic happens in these home games, we need to accept our our reality. We are a, a championship club punching above our weight and that's been the way really since since the end of that 80 19 season after losing the FA Cup final so I don't know we just have to kind of go into this and, and believe if we've got a bit of you know solidity in that defense just keep it nil nil try and get the clean sheet and then we'll, we'll take whatever comes after that but this Arsenal side they've been up and down um, over the last few years we have on occasion got results against them under Marco Silva, of course, that late cleverly winner. Um, beat them in the FA Cup quarter-final. That was a famous moment with that Guedio Aura goal. Um, and uh, also beat them in the, in the home match uh, not too long ago as well, uh, previously. So, you know, we can do it. We can do it against these bigger teams. Against Chelsea, we were very battling and unlucky to, to not at least get a point from that. And against City, OK, City outplayed us, but we were in the battle when we, we played some good football. So we know what we're, the position we're in now. We've kind of surrendered the right to go for these kind of matches. But we still have quality in attack. Ismail Asar obviously is our main man, but we, we still have other good players like you like to Emmanuel Dennis. And Sizoka hopefully can win that midfield battle with Granit Xhaka and Thomas Partey. So, you know, I'm not saying that we should expect anything from today, but there is something about this game where... You never quite know. So, score prediction. We're going for it. We're going for a Watford win. Um, I mean, I think I am actually in real, you know, truth, predicting an Arsenal win just because that's what I think will probably happen. Um, we've got to be realistic about which games we get points from. Uh, and, you know, the home games have to be improved um, much more because we've had such an awful home record um, and... The home games we've still got to get is, is five of the, the bottom nine or something like that. So Leeds, Everton, Brentford, those are the games. If we can't win those, we're pretty much down. Um, but this kind of one, is a you can see it as a bit of a bonus. If we get something out of it, then great. If we show a great performance, then great. But if we, if we lose embarrassingly, like we did against Liverpool, then, you know, the writing's on the wall to, to an extent. But let's see what we can do. Uh, and let's try and uh, get out of Arsenal. But in my optimistic Watford prediction, I'll say Watford 1, Arsenal 0. Keep it tight and grab a last-minute goal from, you know, Emmanuel Dennis. He's magic, you know. And, uh, and every single time Watford have won this season, yes, guess who's been on the score sheet? It's been Emmanuel Dennis. And uh, we've not actually scored the first goal in the game for very, very long. Uh, the last time we... Um, scored at the first time of the game uh, and not gone on to win was of course that West Ham game um, back in late December and also Brentford we surrendered a 1-0 lead there with a Dennis header so really need someone other than Dennis to uh, chip in with the goals but but if we can get him playing well in that system obviously he's not going to have the link up with, with Saar but we've just got to see more attacking and more you know more more fruitfulness in that in that department but at the same time you kind of edit your expectations because of the opposition we've got today and we've we've got to be careful defensively so that's that's the priority so um i think yeah one nil dennis goal and he celebrates in front of the fans he does that kind of like thing he did against man united where he puts his hands to his ears and and uh and, and makes uh, makes his name heard and uh, that will be in the 93rd minute but Back to my original self, my realistic and uh, and an actual prediction. I think Arsenal will win this 3-1. I think the first goal of the game, I originally predicted on my channel Joshua King, but actually I'm going to go for uh, a man who's coming in today and hopefully will give us that, that flair. Cucho Hernandez scored a beauty against Villa on the opening day and I think he is capable of another worldie, so he'll score on 55 minutes, but we'll accept the reality of the situation with goals from... Kieran Tierney on 73rd minute. Then the second goal for Arsenal, Bukayo Saka, of course, uh, at the Academy of Watford as a young kid. 
Uh, he'll get his uh, Arsenal second goal on the 83rd minute and then the 91st minute of the match, Arsenal get their third goal and it's a strike from an unlikely source. But Cedric, the right back, gets on the score sheet, the Portuguese maestro. So thanks for watching my match preview. Let's go for it. Come on, you horns. Let's see what happens and I'll see you after the game. You owns. We're back home at the Vic. Admittedly, it's not been a very good home to come to in terms of results, but you never know. It's on TV, under the lights, this afternoon. Come on, first game of March. I feel like we can win this one. Just got this feeling. I don't know, but let's see. Come on, you owns. I'll see you at full time. Full time at Vicarage Road in the Premier League, an eighth successive home defeat. But, but we can hold our heads high after that one. Watford two, Arsenal three. Look, at the end of the day, right? We know we're in an uphill battle, and what you need in that kind of situation is attitude. We showed that today. Unfortunately, we left it too late. And unfortunately, we're still very, very open defensively. We are like a leaking boat, uh, you know, open as anything. And it's almost like we're just inviting Arsenal to have a go at us. It's really hard to fix that overnight. Um, and f to be fair to him, Roy Hodgson, before today, three clean sheets in six games as manager which was amazing considering we hadn't kept a clean sheet before then so look it's not going to be easy to fix this it's not going to be easy to stay up we know this um and the size of the club we are we we're just going for it right but we knew today was going to be tough with arsenal's quality quality players they have in that team bukayo saka emil smith were obviously not playing today but they had Odegaard in you know the quality of that third goal from Gabriel Martinelli. Admittedly, Watford should have closed down sooner, but you know these are some absolutely unbelievable players. Ramsdale's usually fantastic in goal, um, and you know they got Tierney, the overlapping fullback. They got some great players, but we start off the game. I think before the match, it was a bit sombre, um, to say the least. I, I I was a bit surprised at how. I don't think dead is the right word, but it, was, it wasn't it was as bouncing as I thought it'd be. Um, but I guess it's hard when the game's not kicked off yet. But yeah, um, very, very nice uh, display at the uh, the start from the Watford fans. Fantastic um, banner showing the, the, the colours of the flag of Ukraine. Um, we're thinking with you, Ukraine, and we hope that... We hope that, you know, you can, you can stop the war, and uh, I just hope that... That the, the people of Ukraine can be saved. I, I really, really do. Um, but yeah, nice, nice um, moment of thinking of that. The game kicks off. We turn our attention to the football, and to be honest, it was an unbelievable start from Watford. Right on the front foot, out the traps quickly, which is very uncharacteristic of us this season. We've been so, so prone to conceding the first goal, but. My goodness me, we nearly scored the first goal in the first 30 seconds. A great ball into Emmanuel Dennis and it just doesn't quite hold his run. It is offside, but it's a fantastic finish under Ramsdale. And although that wasn't a goal, it almost seemed to rile us up a little bit. You know, Arsenal, a bit of a wake-up call for them. And it gave us a bit of positivity before the game had even really kicked off um, properly. That, OK, maybe we are going to go for this one. Even though we, we know we have to be, you know, sitting back most of the time and, and staying in it, we've got a bit of threat going forward. Um, but yeah, some good chances for Watford, but not really enough. Uh, man, um, Arsenal just managing to keep a lot of the ball, um, as they usually do. But, you know, in getting into the tackles, there was that intensity from Watford in the first half. There was a bit of desire to, you know, stop Arsenal's stem and, and, and stop their flow. Um but ultimately, Arsenal, they've got the quality and it paid. And look, the first goal scored by Odegaard is just 
really frustrating because we were playing some good football. We were showing a good performance. Um, there was a little moment in the first half where, you know, Ramsdale just got away with one. Good ball in. Um, and Ramsdale kind of just spills it. And he, luckily for him, just squirms it away in time. But the goal for Arsenal comes from a, from a bit of an, uh, you know, lapse in concentration. Arsenal zip it about really, really quickly. Um, and you just think, fair enough. Like, there was so, so quick. Um, really good pass in to Saka. And Saka pulls it back really, really sharply. And there is an, a sweeping move. Martin Odegaard with the first goal of the match. Um, look, there was no nothing Foster could have done. It was just a really quick Arsenal counter. Which helped. They weren't brilliant Arsenal today, I've got to say. Um, you know, not saying they're not going to get top four. But, you know, they're not superb. They're just, uh, you know, seven out of ten most weeks. But they're just clinical um, and... You know, we, we we defensively are a bit all over the place. So they didn't seem to look like they wanted to go for that second half after the third Arsenal goal. Um, and they're kind of sitting back, trying to waste time. They conceded a second. Um, so, you know, they were really not a polished article today, Arsenal. But, you know, to be fair to them, they did enough for the result. Um, it's just we left it too late. And, you know, at 1-0, you think, OK, we've done it again. We've conceded the first goal. Where is it going to go from here? You fear the worst. But to be fair, we showed some great tenacity, have an attack, have a really good spell in, in the game where we start to string some passes together and, and, and create some opportunities. But again, not really anything um, clear cut. And then the ball goes out to Kiko Feminia, the fullback. Now, this is what we've been missing. With Ngakia in the team recently, with Kiko having a, a knock, what you do have with Ngakia is a bit more of defensive solidity. But what you've got with Feminia is an unbelievable crosser of the ball. That guy is so, so good at doing just that and just getting into an area which is dangerous enough. Now, too much in this game, unfortunately, we got the ball out to wide areas and there weren't enough players supporting the box. So then we put it into the box aimlessly and not find a Watford player. But this was certainly not aimless. This was right on target from Kiko. What a ball. And can I just say, Cucho Hernandez is a man for the big moment. What a goal. Goal of the season, month of the... I don't know, just name it all. What a finish from the Colombian Cucho Hernandez. Absolutely superb. So, what an overhead kick that was. Just no chance for Ramsdale. What a way to get back in the game. And, uh, you know, scoring it down our end, celebrating right in front of us. It was absolutely brilliant to see. Uh, and the chance of Cucho, Cucho... So that was good. Um, a bit of the fighting spirit that we, saw, we so, showed in the first uh, goal that we scored against Palace. You thought, yeah, OK, we've done that again today. And then you think, OK, where are we going to take it on now from here? One all. Let's... It's hard to say let's push on because it's still... We're, we're precarious and we're defensively open. But you think, OK, this should be good, right? Wrong. Um, we concede a second and it's just... It's really frustrating to go into that half-time break, 2-1 down. Saka had a fantastic game today and he gets the goal. I mean, it's just, it's just they're cutting us open too easily and really there was just no, there was no way we could stop it. Um, he gets the second goal. You go into half-time at 2-1, you think, <sighs> frustrating, but still a long way to go. Maybe we can do something. Third goal for Arsenal, the third one, I think honestly, Craig Pawson, mate he wasn't there in the game, he, he really bottles it firstly, he bottled it today because the amount of times Arsenal in the second half when it was 3-1, when it was 2-1 just absolutely obvious time wasting like they're not even trying to hide it Shaka going down easily and getting in the ear of Pawson you got Ramsdale taking absolutely 500 million years to take his goal kicks and just readjusting the ball on the on the on the line and stuff like that, it's just not needed at all. So yeah, that was um, very annoying. Um, but then the third goal comes from Mikel Arteta, and it shouldn't stand. It's as simple as that. Managers are not allowed to come out of their technical area, and let alone do that contribute to an Arsenal goal. So the ball is going out for a throw, and. Craig Pawson's not even watching. And then what happens is Arteta, 
He doesn't need to go out there. Literally, an Arsenal player was on its way to picking up the ball and taking the throw. But Arteta sprints out of his technical area, gets the ball, and basically does his own like little throw on to the Arsenal player, who then has the actual throw on, and zips out to Martinelli, who then shoots, goes in, top corner finish, great goal. But again, as I say, shouldn't have allowed that to happen because, number one, that just cannot happen from Arteta. And number two... We should be closing it down and just so frustrating in a game where at 2-1 you say, all right, that's decent. We we, we ended the first half not brilliantly by conceding, but still a very good first half performance. We were were in it. It just feels like we're always one goal behind. We're always having to catch up. And yeah, it's 3-1 and you're like, well, that's pretty much the game gone. But fortunately, Watford didn't give up. However, we did leave it too late to start going for it. And, you know, it was just frustrating because we were playing some good football. And then off comes Imran Loser, much to the demise and the uh, to the pain of the Watford fans, a collective groan for that decision. OK, fair enough. Kayembe comes on. Then we bring on Kalu for his debut late on. He did decent, had a bit of running to do and uh, showed some pace. But ultimately... Why, oh why, are we waiting to the 82nd minute to start going at Arsenal? When it's 3-1, you think you've got nothing to lose. You know, this Arsenal team are not spectacular. They've, you know, they've got something to go out there. But the confidence is so low, I suppose. And, I don't know, there's just not enough creativity and not, not enough ideas. But we still scored two today. And to be fair to them, we get the second goal on 80-something minutes quite late on. You think, okay, in around five minutes to go, maybe, just maybe, unless a miracle is about to happen, we could find a way to get an equaliser. I mean, it's a really good finish from Sissoko. That's back-to-back home games now he's scored in, and uh, he doesn't usually get them, so that's good to see. Um, Just kind of got it underneath Ramsdale, good finish. So then it was like, okay, all right, all right, let's go. But as as with the Watford way, we leave it too late, and Arsenal just time-waste and see it out, and... I think Arsenal deserved the win, just, but we've got to take a lot from today. We've got to take the fact we were in there, competitive, fighting for it. We, you know, we scored that Dennis goal in the in the first half, obviously disallowed. We, we were in the contest and Arsenal really weren't all that. But the problem is, especially with, I think it was the second goal for Arsenal, just those lapses in concentration are costly and and a team like Arsenal with the attackers they've got they will be clinical and they will punish you so the lesson learned today is don't have lapses don't wait to the 80th minute to really go for it in the second half because the first half performance was good it's just we didn't carry that into the second half um, for the first 10 or so minutes and then hopefully shore up the defense but we we can see two goals again uh in the in the in the game in the in the first half and then another in the third in the second half so with the third one so look going into next game against Wolves we need to get at least a point otherwise we're we're really in trouble but eight defeats at home in a row come on you horns need to be better oh man of the match oh that's glad you reminded me thank you man of the match Hassan Kamara you absolute legend all game he was on it just knew his role executed it fantastically and you know Foster he'll, he'll be gutted he's beaten by, by those goals today but I don't think he, he he had a lot of wonder saves to make neither did Aaron Ramsdale so look we go again against Wolves I think there are positives Cucho what a goal um, and obviously no Saar today but we didn't look that bad because of it it's just the defence needs, needs sorting out for sure so thanks for watching I'll see you next time bye bye